Hi everyone, this is Chris Petrie. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, just a, a nice uh, welcome to everyone, uh, new subscribers. Uh, thanks for stopping by and checking out my uh, site here. Um, we're going to have a lot of fun today. We're going to actually um, delve into something that I think um, is going to be an interesting study on simplifying um, a watercolor uh, scene. So I guess uh, my my main idea here is sometimes we'll have a photograph or there'll be a scene we're looking at maybe for somewhere and we want to sketch or paint or um, or maybe we're trying to um, take someone else's um, artwork and try to reproduce it in our own way to you know try to create a painting of our own and we just it's almost like we're overloaded with information within the the, the work the uh, photograph or or even if we're outdoors or whatever scene we might be painting where there's a lot of information or a lot of subject matter it can be kind of like overwhelming to try to tackle it so the best way to, to think of it is just to try to simplify things as much as possible so in this video I want to try to take a scene like we have here we have a nice um, boardwalk scene this is Wildwood New Jersey uh, this is a beautiful uh, photograph of the boardwalk there and so what I'm going to try to do is kind of just go through the steps that I I would use to try to simplify uh, simplify this uh, this scene and um, you know create a watercolor painting from it and um, it's not that difficult it's just a matter of um, a little bit of pre-planning which is really uh, a lot of times you know my regular uh, subscribers you guys know I love to just you know do uh, compositions all the time small comps and work out ideas so that's what we'll do here we'll, we'll work out some ideas beforehand before we we uh, go in and and start to create this painting the, the uh, finished painting so here you can see uh, this is a boardwalk and we have a tram uh, one of those um, uh, carts um, the tram car going across the um, boardwalk and lots of people and figures everywhere tons of figures I've never seen more figures in one photograph I don't think and there's cool, uh, interesting boardwalk um, uh, buildings here, and there's places you can have uh, pizzerias, and um, there's an arcade. So we have tons of great uh, subject matter here, and it's exciting. It's an exciting scene, like if you've ever been to the boardwalk in New Jersey. Um, it's just the greatest uh, experience. It's just so much fun and lots of action going on and just excitement. And the ocean is right there too, next to the boardwalk and just great memories for me uh, growing up in New Jersey and going to the boardwalk. So here we're gonna, again, try to simplify this. Um, you know, years ago when I was first starting out in watercolor, this would have been really a tremendous challenge. And I don't think I would have been able to really um, complete it until I started really researching a lot of things in, in the books that I've read and a lot of the artists that I've watched and I've gained a lot of uh, insight on how to not be overloaded and overwhelmed with a painting like this so um, let's get started we've seen the photograph here we're gonna work from and this is actually a finished painting I did of the same scene and I'll try to zoom into that I should say zoom out a little Okay, so now this is the painting of that scene, and it's you can see I've changed it a little bit. Um, some of the things I changed was I, I didn't put in as many figures that are in the photograph, which helped me a lot. And my normal way of painting, I don't think I'm as as impressionistic as I did on this painting, but because this is such a incredibly detailed painting I went with more of an impressionistic style where I wasn't trying to capture every detail but just putting impressions of, of figures here and there especially here with the figures in the middle distance um, I tried to make them much more loose and just you know little brush strokes that suggest um, figures and people walking and children and parents and everybody and here as we get closer to the foreground I develop my figures a little more in detail and um, I think I could have spent a little more time on making the figures a little more um, dynamic maybe changing the poses a little bit to make them look a little more interesting and they're not perfect of course you can see there are certain things on here that are not you know exactly perfect but um, nonetheless you get the feeling of lots of figures and people walking around on the boardwalk here and then the buildings um, I 
capture the nice flow of the buildings going off into the distance and the more middle distant um, buildings over here that were in the photograph and then I added in the uh, roller coaster over here in the very distance to give the painting more depth um, because in the photograph if we look again just quickly here at the photograph um, we can see that um, there wasn't a roller coaster you know over here structure but but putting putting that in made it filled this area in a little bit because it seems like there's so much information and um, things happening over here on the left side of the painting I wanted to bring a little more balance I should say even over here to this side of the painting so a little more balance a little more weight even a little bit because this is you know the the painting is feeling a little out of balance in a sense I guess the photograph original photograph was it's pretty balanced but I figured uh, this over here would look a little better with the um, roller coaster in the right hand side and lots of colors and action and, and light the lights coming from the left or from the right actually across this way and the shadowing you can kind of see that's how it's set up my shadows are all left of the figures and the, um, the subject matter and so the bright sunlight's uh, striking across the fronts of these uh, boardwalk stands and so it's a good it's an overall good impressionistic feel of the scene so let's do it let's let's start on the journey here of doing a nice impressionistic painting of the boardwalk at the shore and we'll start off with some comps um, for my regular, you know, for the regular um, subscribers, you'll notice I I changed a little bit of my my brushes on this painting. I'm going to use more uh, square brushes, so I have varieties of brushes, and so I just I have you know like I don't think I use that one. I think I mainly use these. I think I use these four. So I have like a medium, small, medium, and large um, square brush. And then um, one needlepoint brush. And then everything else is the same. My palette's the same. Colors, I'm just using my normal palette. So here we'll do the first uh, swatch here. So the first swatch, I'm going to um, use cobalt blue for just the sky color. Um, touch of burnt sienna, or I mean burnt umber, to gray that down a little bit. Then to the left of my blue, I'm going to do a little bit of uh, raw sienna raw umber I should say and some raw sienna so this will be the warm color the warmth of the uh, first uh, glazing so we're going to do a glazing technique here so my my idea is doing three swatches or, th or three glazings as we go and we'll see how we, we um, develop the, the painting that way so here, I'm going to wash in the sky color. So the first thing I'll do is I'll, I'll wet the uh, paper. So I'm just going to put some water onto the, onto the watercolor paper. I'm using Arches uh, rough, rough grain paper. For finished paintings too, it really helps to use really good paper. Um, watercolor paper is really, it's like the, it's like watercolor brushes. The the better the brush you use, the the better um, feel you'll have for your your painting going on on the paper. As well as the same thing with the the paper. The, the better the paper, the definitely the better results. I I still use uh, inexpensive paper to practice on and sometimes to work out ideas on. But if I do a finished painting, I try to use the the best paper I can afford. So here now we're going to do the sky color. So we're going to go in with some of that cobalt blue. 
and these are just compositions here this is not the finished painting of course and a couple spots of blue for the sky this is the first glazing we're going to do the subsequent darker um, glazings as we go we'll start off with the lightest lights and then we're going to put in the warmth which is the uh, raw umber and uh, raw sienna and that's on the boardwalk itself it's warm it's like the wood of the of the boardwalk and then there's the warmth of the sunlight striking the buildings on the left and that that should be good so the first glazing is nice and light and we have to let that dry so now's a perfect time we take a break um, so what I'll do is I'll um, we'll come back for part two and we'll once this dries and we'll go over this a second or on our second glazing and we'll we'll develop the ideas um, in a in a small compositional format here so that when we go on to the larger full painting um, we'll already have worked out the ideas in a compositional practice in a sense um, before we go into the uh, finished painting. Okay, so we'll be back in just a few minutes for part two.